think is going to happen here today? Well, it sort of looks like there's going to be a party. A great celebration. Do you think it's going to be fun? I love parties. I think this is going to be fun. Um, what kind of food do you think will be served? Or how about special activities? What do you think will happen? Oh, and who's going to be invited? I'd like to know who's going to be there. But I think, first of all, how do people even know that there's going to be a party and that they're invited? Of course, they are going to get an invitation. And that invitation might say you're invited. It might say it's a party. But in some way, the invitation is going to say to them that it's going to be a special event and they are invited. Invitations make you feel so special. On the bottom of the invitation, you see the letters there, the RSVP. It's French for please respond. Once people respond that they are coming to that party, the preparations will begin. A party sounds like a lot of fun, but if you're planning the party, how would you feel if several people that you invited refused the invitation? When you gave it to them, they said, nope, not interested, don't wanna come. Would that make you feel good or bad? I think it would be sort of sad, wouldn't it? You were planning the grandest party ever. You were all excited and some people just didn't want to come. Can you imagine that? Or how would you feel if others said that they were coming? And then when the day of the party arrived, those who said that they were, would be there didn't come. Oh, they have excuses on why they can't follow through on their commitment to the invitation. But how would you feel about their excuses? Excuses are just reasons that people make up for not doing something that they don't want to do. Although they obligated themselves to be there, now they wish they didn't. Maybe something better came along. They want to be excused. Mm, wouldn't make you feel very good, would it? Make me feel sad. Well, today we're going to hear about the greatest invitation that was ever given. This invitation was sent by the greatest event planner in the whole world. God, our creator, has had a plan from the very beginning of creation. When he created the very first man and woman, he wanted to have a close relationship with them. He didn't ever want to be separated from them. But then, when Adam and Eve disobeyed God's only command, they brought sin into the perfect world that God had created. The punishment for their disobedience was to be separated from God. And because they sinned, every person born after them was born with sin in their heart. But God had a plan. He promised that he would send a savior that would rescue every man, woman, boy, and girl from their sins. In the Old Testament, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were chosen by God to be set apart as his people. God gave his laws and his promises to his people. And God's plan was to use those people to show the world that he was the one true God. And then they would point others to the promised savior when he came to earth. Hundreds of years passed. God's people were still waiting for the promise to be fulfilled. Unfortunately, his people became very prideful of being God's chosen ones. They thought they were special. They didn't always obey him though. In fact, many of them worshiped other gods and rebelled against him. For many Jewish people, it was as though the invitation that God had sent them had been put in the bottom of a drawer, never to be remembered. But God continued to show love and forgiveness to his people. God always keeps his word. And he said that he would send the promised savior, whether many people were still waiting for it to happen or not. Our Bible story starts in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14. Jesus has been invited to the house of an important Pharisee to have a meal. Lots of rich people were there watching Jesus and listening to him. Pharisees were the religious leaders of Jesus' day. They tried to obey all of the laws that God gave them. They wanted to please him. 
They not only obeyed the laws that God made, but they made up over 700 extra ones. These leaders were the ones who taught God's people the laws, and they expected everybody to obey those laws, plus the ones that they made up. The Pharisees became so obsessed with the laws that they forgot that the one thing that God wanted from them was to love him and to have a relationship with him. Because the Pharisees' focus was on their own, their own obedience to the laws, they didn't see God's promise of a savior right in front of their eyes. Instead, they saw Jesus as the amazing fulfillment to a promise. They saw him instead as, an, as his enemy. Instead of working with Jesus to help others come into God's kingdom, the Pharisees spent their time fighting against him, trying to trick him and prove that he really wasn't God's son. Here was God's promised savior right in front of them and they failed to recognize him. They didn't believe in him. They were stubborn and they were hard hearted. They liked being a part of God's chosen people. That was great, but they did not like the message that Jesus was giving on how they were to come to serve God. They wanted to come to God by their own righteousness, which was keeping all of the laws, not through believing in Jesus. Jesus knew their hearts. And on the day that he was in the home of the Pharisee, he told a parable to help the people understand the truth about God and his kingdom. Listen to the parable that Jesus told. There once was a man who was making preparations for a great banquet. He wanted to share his food and have a great time of celebration. He sent out his servants to deliver the invitations to the guests that he wanted to come to the banquet. The guests said that they would be happy to come to this man's banquet. The man began preparations for the banquet. He made sure that he had enough food for all of the guests who said they were coming. And when all the preparations were made, when they were all complete, he sent his servant out to tell the invited guests that everything was ready and it was time to come and celebrate. Oh, the servant must have been so excited to go and tell each guest that it was now time. The servant had smelled the food that was being prepared. He saw the table with many place settings waiting for each guest. And he saw the joy and the excitement in his master's face as he was looking forward to sharing the great banquet with his invited guests. Now, when the servant reached the homes of the invited guests, he was met with many excuses why they couldn't come to the banquet. One invited guest said, I've just purchased some land and I must go and check it out. Please excuse me from attending the banquet. Another guest said, I've just bought some oxen. I have to see if they'll work well in my fields. Please excuse me from attending the banquet. And still another guest said, I just got married, so I can't come. They were all just too busy. How disappointing this news was to the servant. He knew how generous his master was by inviting them and preparing the feast for them to enjoy. While the servant was out telling the guests that the banquet was ready, we can only imagine what the host was doing. He was sitting there waiting for the first guest to arrive, for that first knock on the door. But the guests didn't show up. No one who said that they would be there was there yet, and he was about to find out why. The servant got back, and he told his master about all of the excuses and how none of the invited guests were going to come to the banquet. Oh, the master was very angry. As a matter of fact, he was furious. It didn't matter so much that he had spent all of his time preparing. His guests just weren't coming. It wasn't even the amount of time or the amount of money that he had spent. It was, his dis it was their disrespect for the host. His kindness was thrown back in his face at their refusal to come. They were rude. They had told him that he, they, they were coming. He made plans and all the food was ready and prepared. Now who was going to eat all this food that was prepared? The master told his servant to go quickly out into the streets and alleys, wherever he could go and find the poor, 
the handicapped, the blind, and the lame, and invite them to come to his banquet. The master said, go quickly. This was urgent. He needed to find guests who would be willing to come because, remember, everything was ready. Time would not wait. Preparations would not wait. The food would not wait. The celebration would go to waste unless there was some guests there to fill the rooms, eat the feast, and partake in the event. The servant did as he was told and returned to the master, and he said, I've done what you told me to, but there's still room for more guests to sit at the banquet. The man said, go outside the city then. Go up and down the roads in the country and invite anyone you find to come to my banquet so that my house will be full. There's plenty of room for everyone. But all of those who were originally invited to the banquet and made excuses not to come, they will not even get the smallest taste of my banquet. The ones who refused the banquet, who refused that invitation, were being replaced by people who had a receptive heart. Do you think that the Pharisees got the message of Jesus' parable? This wasn't just a story about a man preparing a banquet. There was a hidden meaning, as there always is in a parable. The invited guests in the parable were the Jewish leaders, the Pharisees, who would not accept Jesus as the way to God. God was, had been inviting these Pharisees to be saved through his promised Savior, but they made up all kinds of excuses why they wouldn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God and they wouldn't accept him as their Savior. By making up excuses, they were rejecting God's invitation to them to spend eternity with him. People make the same excuses today. We can be more interested in making more money, having more things, and then we don't accept the invitation to follow Jesus and become fishers of men. We can also get so busy doing things, sports, activities, friends, video games, that we don't have time or we won't make time for Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. Many of us have responsibilities like school and work, but responsibilities should never be an excuse to say no to God. When he invites us to follow him and serve him, our answer should be yes. He will enable us to do the things that we need to do and to be obedient to him in the area that he has called us to serve. In Jesus' day, the people who were crippled, who were blind, or who, or who were lame were considered outcasts. People looked down on them, and they were not treated well. In the parable, Jesus told the Pharisees that the crippled, the blind, and the lame represented the people that the Pharisees did not think were worthy to be in God's eyes. They were not worthy to be considered righteous. Since those who were invited to the banquet made excuses not to come, the master, Jesus, invited the outcasts to be a part of the banquet because they were ready and they were willing to come. They were eager to receive Jesus as their savior. The banquet represents the free gift of salvation. It's made available to all. And as the story unfolds, we see God's heart for all people. He wants everyone to know him. Jesus died on the cross so that people could go to heaven and spend eternity with God. This parable teaches us that we've all been invited to the greatest event ever. Jesus is teaching us that God sent out his invitation for salvation to all. God loved the world so much that he sent his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The invitation for the great banquet comes from God to us. He gives that invitation through Jesus, through his death on the cross. In Revelation 3.20, Jesus says, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. Many people think of God as being far away, removed from their lives and uninterested in them. But that's not true. Jesus' words say, here I am. He's knocking at an invisible place. He's knocking on the door to our heart, a place deep inside of us where our most important thoughts and feelings live. 
Jesus says, if anyone hears my voice, anyone, that's you and that's me, that's anyone in the whole world who hears this invitation. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, opens the door to their heart, he will come in and he will be a part of their life forever. Through Jesus, God gives us a heavenly invitation to come to a heavenly celebration. Can you imagine a party planned by Jesus? What could be greater? Let's close today with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.